So um, I, I, I have one question to start. Uh, who here is using Windows? Uh, so that we, I was going to do it in Windows, but it's harder. So I just wanted to know. That's why I'm using Windows as well. So okay, so there are Tom and Lena and uh, I think Kurt. Okay, so there is people in on Windows, so we will go with that. Uh, okay. So first of all, uh, where is I, I will share after after the after this I will share the the presentation with the links. I think that will help. Um, so where is the QGIS documentation? Uh, I guess everyone knows the, the page, the official page with the documentation. And what some might not know is that the source code is stored on GitHub. And GitHub is a platform where we share our, our code. And we will use it to get the code and even to edit, edit stuff. Okay, what do we use to write documentation? We use Sphinx Docs. It's an open source Python based tool to write documentation. Um, the good thing about Sphinx is that we can, uh, the Sphinx source code is written in uh, restructured text, text uh, which I will show later. Um, the good thing about Sphinx is, is that we can we, we write the documentation and then we can output it to HTML, PDF, uh, plain text, or whatever with the same source. We can also build many different uh, styles. So we can use the same source and in, in build uh, the same page with a different uh, style, which is good. And it also has lots of uh, internationalization uh, tools that allow us to have all the all our documentation in different languages. So the first step, I don't know if you, uh, you guys are going to try to follow me. It might not be as easy as, it, as that. But the first si step for anyone that wants to contribute to QGIS documentation is to create a GitHub account. That's, that's mandatory. Whatever the way you do it, you need to, to create. Uh, an account. It's not. It's not. Uh, oops. It's not very very difficult. Sorry, internet is being slow or something. Oops. Okay, so I'm, I'm already signed in, but basically what you need to do is pick a username, pick an email and a password, and you, you are set to go. I'll, I will use mine now. So there are basically two ways of writing documentation. There is a really easy way uh, which allows us to use um, to, sorry, not sharing full screen. Um, allow us to do small edits, small or big edits in GitHub repository page directly. And this doesn't need any kind of uh, setup for, for, for you. And we can also use the, the fix me link on QG's documentation pages, which I will show hopefully. Um, so for instance, in this, um, this user's manual page, if you go to the bottom, you have a small link here, textual error, missing text, or you know better, fix me. You can click there and you'll go directly to the GitHub page 
you already logged in and you see the source code here and you can just fix something here directly whatever uh, and then without any more you do all the changes you can preview the changes please um, bear in mind that this preview is just is not a perfect preview uh, because it, it shows like some stuff that is uh, from Sphinx that GitHub cannot, cannot preview. But still, you can have a, the idea. Uh, for now, it won't preview images and stuff like that. But we have a pull request prepared for, for that. Hopefully, it will be merged soon. So you do the edit. You look into the preview. And you could just create a new branch and you create a, a pull request from it. Oh, you should um, enter a title for your pull request and add some comments about what, what are you fixing or changing in that, in that file. Uh, you can also navigate in the, instead of using the fix me, um, the fix me link, you can actually navigate the QGIS documentation repo. Uh, so all the all the code is inside the source tree inside docs and then you have all the documents that we work on and for instance the user user um, user manual you can go we would go to preamble and then you could use the little uh, pencil uh, button here to start editing it just like we did with the fix me um, with the fix me link. So, and I, I will actually create a, some change, some changing changes here. So, strange, change. And I will, in my case, I have permissions to to write the branch, but uh, to write uh, to the repo. But you would only have this this option. Excuse me. Uh, so, in my case, I have two options. Uh, like to Alex, so just somebody is trying to ask a question. Yeah. Um, yes, right here. Go ahead. Uh, you you both wrote uh, my change, but then you wrote strange change. Uh, what what did the last thing you wrote? What does that end up? Okay, so the when I wrote my change, I was changing the was changing actual the, the actual documentation. Okay, and, and the change. strange change is the the title. It's the title that I'm giving to my pull request. Okay, so that 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 doesn't show up with anybody using the documentation. That just shows up with with you as the one approving it. Yeah, exactly. Or actually, or for other people that will approve my change because I'm proposing it, right. people will look in, into it. They they will see a pull request no, named. Well, we should yeah. <laughs> use a better name, obviously. Okay, thank you. And write some and write some notes. Yeah, and then you can see that um, in 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 the open pull requests, you can see the. Um, uh, the comments that you can add and you can see the changes that that were added and then you just create the pull request i won't create just not to create uh too many rubbish in, <laughs> in our documentation but you would just create click the create pull request and and that's it this is this is like i said the 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 easy the easy the easy way can i ask again Yes, of course. I'm, I'm just wondering because the, the wording of it, just to try to remember it better, it's called pull when I push it back to the server? Yeah, a pull request is when you try to merge your changes from your branch to the master branch, to the official okay. repository. Okay, and that's called a pull. Yeah. Okay. A, a pull request, a pull request, not a pull. Okay. A pull is yeah, a pull, pull request. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. 
it, it sounds it sounds backwards, but it's from the perspective of the upstream repository. It's pulling changes from your repository. All right. Thanks. Okay. So the there are good things and bad things about this easy way. Uh, the good thing is that is very fast. You can fix fix something very fast. There is no need for a setup, and you can uh, edit. Everywhere, so you are giving a course, a QGIS course, for instance. You find some errors in documentation. You can jump in in the same the user, the users, the the trainee computer, and and fix it in in very very quickly. So it's very good. The bad things about it is that you can only edit one single file. Uh, to edit several files, you have to create several pull re pull requests. Um, you you cannot add files. Uh, new files and, and or images or uh, you we have previewed the, the documentation like I said it's not the full preview of, of how it going to look in, in the end and you cannot fix uh, the pull, a pull request that you did so for instance you did a pull request someone asks um, and we, we can see that later if someone asks for you to change something you won't be able to do it uh, in the in the GitHub page. You'd have to go and do go the hard way, as as I will will go after after this. So this is the as easy as it can get. Uh, but then there is the writing documentation the hard way. It's not that hard. It just it has a bigger learning curve. So for that, you have to kind of set up the building tools. You have to download QGIS documentation from the official repository. You, you will edit the Sphinx source locally in your, in your machine, in your computer. You will build it to see, to see for, for preview, to see if everything looks, looks good and if there are any, aren't any errors. Uh, and then you change, you, you send the changes to the remote repository. There is a, uh, and in this case, you are sending to your remote repository, not QG's remote re repository. We will see that in, in a moment. And then you create a pull request just like we did uh, uh, before. So the good things about this way is that uh, it's, it's the opposite of the of of the easy way. So you can edit multiple files. You can add new files and images. You can build and preview the final result, and you can edit your pull requests, uh, your mistakes, or or improve your pull pull requests uh, as many times as you want before um, before someone merge it to the to to master. Um, the bad thing is that, like we said, you need to set up locally, so you need to have a machine prepared for that, and it has a, a bigger learning curve. But basically, uh, the learning curve is more on um, setting it up and then on using Git command line. But after, there is a simple workflow that we use, and it's not that hard, so don't, don't, don't give up. So what we need as um, building tools, uh, we need to have a command shell or a terminal with Python, uh, two or three. Uh, I think it doesn't matter for now. Um, you need to have pip to install more Python packages. You need git to, to do the version control and to get the code to, to your machine. And you need make to build the docs because we use uh, a make file to, to build the docs. Um, so in Linux, um, everything is almost pre-installed. Uh, if you haven't installed Python, you, you can install it using, uh, and, and this is for uh, Ubuntu or Debian-based uh, systems. You use like sudo apt-get install Python or Python tree. You can install and set. Uh, I think I'm not sure, but I think that right now Python tree already installs pip, 
but if if it doesn't, you can use this uh, this command to to set up pip in Python three, and then you and then you install Git, and that's it. the The tools are all set. Make should be available uh, already. If not, it's the same. So, uh, I think you can. Uh, you can do sudo apache get install make or maybe use uh, build essentials, which is, which is something that install a bunch of packages. But I think it's it, in, at least in Ubuntu, it's it's available uh, already when you when you have it. In Windows and oh, Windows setup. Windows setup. Uh, we have to. Uh, jump through some hoops and some stuff to <laughs> to make it work um i was trying to use um the osgo for the for windows shell but it failed in the end uh, i will try to make it that work and then i can explain it in this presentation but the other options are using uh sigwin um shell that is a simulator for kind of a simulator for uh, linux uh, bash uh, terminal and actually in windows 10 you can uh, use linux bash uh, in it um, the link here that I, I will share later maybe in the meeting uh, page um, the link will point you to a, a page explaining how to uh, enable the linux bash in windows 10 Okay, so now I will share my virtual machine and we'll start doing stuff. Okay. Oops. Uh, I don't believe it that I don't have internet now in the virtual machine. Okay. So for we start by installing the Sigwin. For that you use this this setup uh, tool and for the Windows users, this will remind you something because this is very similar to the OSGO for Windows um, installation. So next, 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 you don't need to think much about these first options. You just select one of the mirrors, next. And now you have to choose what you want to install. And we need to install, um, so we need to install Python, pip, uh, git, and make, and optionally, uh, rsync. I'll show here a list, I think. So, git is in the devil, develop uh, category, Python 3 in interpreters, Python 3 pip in Python and resync on net. So we can search here, Python 3, and then we just ask it to install. Repeat. So 
So we, for, for those of you that are not uh, used to this, you have to click this skip to, to say what is the version that you want to install. It. Sorry, can you repeat that? You have to you have to skip something in order to choose something. No, 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 no. So by default, uh, when you when you you find a tool, yeah. it's it's a, oops. I just um, it 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 says that the tool is skipping, so it's not going to install. You need to okay. click it so that it shows the version of the. Yeah. Uh, tool that you are going to install and this means that you are going to install it got it thank you and i think we miss make that's where is it here the new version of make utility and i will show in add sync which is uh i don't know if i'm going to have time for or talk about it but I will join it and then you just oops and then you just go next one good thing is that you can if you remember about um, a Windows installation using OS Geo for, for Windows you can repeat the the setup it, it will pick up what you have installed uh, um, before and you can Add new tools if you forgot something. Sorry, this takes a bit, but I don't think it's too much. Anyone has uh, any question? Well, we are looking at this moving. No? Uh, Alex, maybe you can explain that um, the reason we need makers for the internationalization, there's some extra magic that QGIS is doing uh, with images and things. Otherwise, I think we should be able to do this all just in a straight Windows Python thing, right? Uh, well, I, we still we use Makefile. Uh, we use a Makefile to to make the documentation. Um, I, I always used it in Linux, so this is the first time I'm trying on on Windows, and I wasn't able to with any of the commands to find the make. Uh, command. I know that there there is a, a make dot bat that you can use somewhere, um, and also we also have for for documentation we have a pavement file, so we could use uh, paver, but I'm not very familiar with it. And I think Richard also prepared um, a Docker uh, a Docker image with all that. Uh, all that is needed to to do documentation, um, but using Sigwin was the the way I. Oh, this is taking too long. Um, the best way I found to 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 make it work. Obviously, there are other options. One other option that I tried was to use the OS Geo shell that is almost ready, and I'm pretty sure that the first time I, I was able to use Make and everything, but I don't know why, then it just stopped, stopped working. So I moved to Seguin. You can also use uh, git bash and then install Python on it. So there, there are a couple of options, I think. So once you have Seguin installed, you have a small window uh, like this. Uh, this is a looks like just Linux, but for the, for Windows users, don't be afraid. It's not that bad. Okay, so we have everything installed for the base uh, base uh, 
documentation base tools for building and now we need to start uh, preparing our uh, getting the code and so on so the first thing that you have to do is you need to go to the github um, uh, repository the QGIS documentation and create a fork uh, for 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 those that are not familiar what is a fork so basically you are you are copying your reposit the QGIS repository to your own account so that you do, you can do um, all the changes that you you want otherwise since only people allowed to to change to edit the this repository will be able to do it so what you do is you go to QGIS documentation and you click the fork um, button actually I don't know yeah um, I already have a fork, so that's uh, two forks actually. But it's pretty f straightforward. You just decide where where you want to to fork the documentation to, and there is there will be one option saying that fork it to your your account directly instead of using a organization. So there should be one option to to your user. Can you please explain the one in the bottom where it said you did not have permission for QGIS, but what you're working with? Um, so you can, once you are, um, uh, you have an account in, in GitHub, you, you can belong to uh, some organizations. So some people can add you to their organization, but that doesn't mean that you can um, do everything in that organization. So in this case, I only have permission. I, I'm a member of the QGIS uh, Portugal organization. And for that organization, I have the permission to, to fork, the, to create a new repo in, in that account, in that, yeah. under that organization, but not for the, for the others. Okay. It, but but what you're doing right now isn't that forking it down locally? No 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 I'm just uh, forking it uh, remotely on my GitHub account. Okay. So um, until now I'm just separating what is uh, the official QG's repository and what is will be my uh, repository. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if I go to Mm -hmm. Let me see. So if I go to GitHub in your repositories, I will find the QGIS documentation. And as you can see, this is the, it's in my account, QGIS documentation, and it says that it's forked from QGIS uh, documentation. At this point, I need to, and, and, and this is when we are going to copy it locally. So I click on this clone download button. I copy to clipboard. Let's hope that this works. And then I go back to Sigwin um, um, uh, shell. I will uh, put it in a more common place. So this is uh, I'm I'm moving throughout the in the in my files to go to the my user space. In this case, this virtual machine is from Boundless, so that's the user is called Boundless. But in in your computer should be like your name or something.
Have we lost connection with Alex? Yeah, I lost him. Um, maybe uh, somebody in the room could just tell him that we're not seeing a screen anymore. Uh, I think he's participating remotely. We'll just need to ping him. <laughs> um, Hello, we cannot hear you. We have no screen. Uh, Tom, you can start to sing along. That would be great. Uh, yeah, I have one. If if I then make a pull request and then I wait for someone to approve it, how do I get information if you have some follow-up comments? Do I have to find them on GitHub or will I also get an email with my GitHub associated account or, or what? Uh, yes, so yeah, you will get an uh, if you s subscribe to GitHub, you need to put your email address in and it will send you a notification to tell you that uh, there's an update on your pull request status. And you'll see um, on the pull request page there'll be like a threaded message board underneath the pull request where you can see any specific questions or queries from the reviewers. Um, and uh, you can just uh, update your you push more changes to your the branch or the your repository and the pull request automatically updates as you push your changes so you don't have to make a new pull request is that, is that the one under personal settings notifications automatically watch repositories uh i guess yes yeah okay yeah, you can, that was on a on a on a repository by repository basis and even on a pull request by pull oh. request basis you can also mute or unmute the, the messages that come from that. Okay. Oh. And right now it says on my GitHub account, you don't have any repositories. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you need, to for, you need to first go to the QGIS uh, um, organization page. So that's github.com slash QGIS. And then yeah. you'll see a list of a lot of different repositories and you look for the one called QGIS-documentation. Yeah. You click into that, and then there's a big green fork button. I think it's green um, on the top right hand corner of the page. When you say uh, the clone or download is green, I'll just click on fork. Yeah. Okay. And then it will make a copy, a local copy for you in your profile. And then you can start to make changes on that profile and then make a pull okay. request from your profile back to the upstream organization's copy. Well, I see. Now it's under there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if you're on, on Windows, GitHub also has like a Windows, some uh, software you can install that kind of gives you a desktop version uh, of software to manage this local checkout copy as well. Yep. Um, okay. Giovanni, did you have any um, luck getting hold of him? Ah, okay, you said he's I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. Sorry. No, no. Um, so I, I don't know where I lost you because I was talking and talking, <laughs> but, um, so I'm, I'm still cloning the, um, the repository. And I was just saying that, um, after these two things, you need to do two things. One is to add the uh, upstream remote. That's uh, a link, uh, for the official, um, um, QG's documentation repository. This this uh, this allow you to in the future to update your your own repository with new things that are um, being merged to being merged to the master to the to the official one. And the last two two commands 
they are not very important uh, now because once you do a commit, uh, if you haven't done this before, it will ask you to, to do it. So I al already have the um, I already have the documentation in my computer. If I go to my user, uh, I have a folder full with all the files that that are composed by of that documentation. Um, and now I need to add that remote thing. It had it remote add upstream. Oh, actually, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to do this because uh, I will. I will not be using it for this dem demonstration. But you have to add it uh, further to to update. So for now, I will. I will just skip it. Um, so after this, you have to install um, all the uh, the um, Sphinx tools and Teams and whatever um, in for, to 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 build the documentation. Uh, good practice is to use a virtual environment to to install that, so that you don't uh, kind of pollute your 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 installation. So you do. Pip install virtual env. Oops. What? Oh god. Okay, now I'm not sure what is going on. So I think I will just jump to jump to um, to Linux if you don't mind. Otherwise, I. But still, the this should this should work. Maybe I didn't install pip uh, in the Sigwin Sigwin. Uh, shell or something. Can you see my my screen still? Yes. Yeah, we can see. Ignore the commands that I'm doing now. Okay. So um, I would have to do pip install virtual env. That that should work there. And then I need to activate it. I already have a um, and the, I already have a virtual env prepared here in my computer. So I do source um, actually. No, I have a, I have it here. And as as you can see, uh, now I'm I'm inside a, a special uh, environment that is protected uh, from from the rest of my installation. 
And now I can install uh, Python to uh, packages uh, here without messing with the, the rest. Uh, in the in the source code, there is a um, there is a, a file called requirements. So we can use pip install minus r r to install all the requirements uh, needed to to this. I or, I already did it in in this computer. But I can do it again. And it will just collect all the packages needed and install them. Actually, you update something. Okay. And now you are ready to, to build the documentation when, when you want. Um, and um, you need to uh, activate the virtual env when you, when you want to build the documentation. And to build the documentation, you just do make HTML. Um, and it will build the documentation. I think I will, let me think. I don't want to because, yeah, you should try and make it. And it might take some time, so you better go and grab a coffee. Meanwhile, we can carry on and see other stuff. Um, I won't do this yet, but so basically the Git, Git workflow that that you can use, and this is different for each person. But when you you have you have the you have your repo, uh, and you need to update it. You do the git update. So this is why I I, I now now uh, my is updated, but you would have to update it using the upstream uh, link to the official repository. So you do git checkout master to move to the master branch. And then you do git update upstream master to, to pull all the new changes from the official repository into, into your master branch. So in, in git you, have branch, you can create branches, so it's like versions of, of the code so that you can work in different things at the same time. Uh, but you shouldn't work in, in the, in the, on the master branch so that you have, always have a clean, sit, clean situation without you messing around. So the sec second step will be to check out, uh, to create a new branch to work on. So kind of uh, making sure that you are not doing anything bad in master. You edit the source code using your favorite text editor. And there are a couple of good editors for Sphinx. I, I like PyCharm, and I also like Atom. It also works uh, pretty good. Um, and then after you, you do the changes, you save the, the changes to using the git command. Uh, and normally, in this case, I'm using this, this option that says that it will uh, this commit in, will include all the changed files, and I give it a message to my to my commit, and then I send the commit to you, to, to my repository because uh, in this case I'm using I'm Git push origin instead of using the upstream. This is the the link for the, the repo. Let's see if if already built. No, it didn't. No problem. What we'll do now is we will edit something. So really quickly while it's doing that. Might break. Actually I can I can I can just interrupt it. It's not a problem. So git checkout 
minus V. So I'm, I'm in master and it's updated. Uh, new intro. So I will call this branch a new intro. And as you can see, I'm uh, actually this is on my computer that shows this, the, the name of the branch. You have to do some stuff too. But you can do git status to see in which branch you are in. And now it's time to, to add it, to add it something. I will So, like I said, all the all the texts that we do is in a, in the source folder. Can you can you read my screen? Or yeah, is it? Yeah, looks good. Yes, or is it? Looks fine here. Okay. So, for instance, like we did before, I would go to preamble. I would go to preamble. There you go. And and here we go. We have oh crap. And I have oh Jesus. Okay, so I have the the file here to to edit. You will notice some strange symbols and stuff. I will. I was trying to. To cover that, I'm not, I'm not sure if we have we'll have time for that. It's a pity, but what we'll do is I, I go here and I do something like my change is here. So I edit the file normally, and in this case, I can edit a, a couple of files. So more changes here. Uh, and I could, can do several changes, and then I go back to the to the um, command line. And if, if I do git status, uh, I can see that there are two files uh, changed: the the features and the the preamble. If I want to see really see the the changes that I made, I use git diff and I can see that in the in the features file, I added more changes here, and the other file I added my changes. So at this point, I did all the changes that I want, and I will create a, com a commit with it. So I do git commit my am. Adds a couple. This is the name for the commit, so it should be it should explain what the commit does. Adds a couple of changes to the intro, and there you go. So what what did, what uh, adding a commit does is creating like a sort a type of um, it's like a restoring point. Using Git, you can go back to this point uh, in the future and you can go back uh, to other commits as well if you do git log you can see all the commits that were done the first one is mine the last one and then you can see all the other commi commits done before and that's it so uh, now I have a commit um, if I do git status uh, I have a clean. Um, I have a clean uh, situation. Uh, so I can I can push this um, these changes to my repo, to my original, to my fork. So for that, I do git push origin. So remember that origin is the it's like a, a link for my my for your uh, repo. A remote repo, and then I want to put 
to put this in also in a, in a new branch. I don't want to, and so I use the same name of the, the branch, of the branch, and this will push, this will create a, a new branch in my remote repo, so in GitHub, uh, and add that changes. If I go there, Uh, when I when I go to the um, to the Senor Neto Shan uh, QG's documentation, uh, this will already have uh, some recent pushed branches that I can use directly to create a pull request, or you can go to uh, you can go to the Git's pull requests and then create a pull request. New pull request. But the, the easiest. Wait, wait, wait. I'll go with the easiest way. That is just clicking the compare, compare and pull request. So, and this this should be familiar, right? So I'm creating a pull request. The pull request uh, automatically uses the the name of the commit. You can see uh, you can see that uh, the pull request includes one commit um, and changes these files, and you can just click create pull request, and that's it. Um, so automatically, um, this um, the pull request will. Uh, check if your branch has no conflicts with the base branch, so with the official master branch. So what it does, uh, what, you can have conflicts if someone edited something at the same time as, as you did, uh, and that might, might be a problem that you have to solve, but we won't cover that. Um, and also Travis, that's, um, uh, an integration tool that we have will start building your documentation, the the one in your branch, uh, and trying to see if uh, there are any errors. Normally, uh, after you do the changes and before you do the commit, you would uh, run that tool that I, I told you before, like make HTML. So that's, uh, uh, and then see the result uh, before you commit. And to see the result, the result is stored in the output folder in the HTML. Then it has the en, e -end from English documentation, and then docs. And then you could just do index. Oops, sorry, failed. Index HTML. And you'll see the documentation as you build it. And you would go to the place where you did the changes. In this case, it, it, uh, this was what I had already built, so it won't show show the changes, but um, you would see the changes here and see if everything looks okay. More importantly, uh, when you run make HTML, it shouldn't throw any error to you. Otherwise, when you go to, and actually that's what happened. Oh God. Um, um, and that's it. So at this point, you what what normally happens is that you have to wait for someone to review your code to see if uh, everything is, is okay or and if if it's not okay people will comment here write a comment here saying hey could you please change something it's not working well 
And in that case, you could just go to your, go back to your editor. Uh, okay, uh, some guy asked me to put a period here. You, you would, uh, and to put a uppercase here. Um, you would do the changes that were asked. Or even if you feel that the, your pull request can, can be improved, you can edit whatever you want. You just go back to do the same exact thing as before. You do git status, you, you just need to commit your changes. And you need to, to push the changes to, to the repo. Once you do that, you can go back to GitHub. And if you refresh this, this page, you'll see, oops. You'll see that now, instead of uh, one commit, you have two commits with two changes. And, the, um, uh, and that's it. And, and, and then you will wait for someone to review again. And until someone says, this looks great, let's merge it. And in, that, in, in my case, I, I have the ability to merge. You might, you might not have that ability. And his advice, since you had, may add several commits, it's advised for you to use this squash and merge option. What we will do is like uh, converting all your commits into a single commit so that is cleaner in, in the QG's history. And I think that's it. Uh, now I wanted to I was hoping this to be a bit faster. So this is the all the workflow. Uh, some useful git commands. Um, I was hoping this to be a bit faster, that we could talk a bit more about uh, how to write, uh, uh, how to edit your documentation the way we, we need you to. Um, and the, the best place for you to do that is to go to the um, gui documentation guidelines. But how about adding images? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's here as well. So. Okay. Um, so in here you find lots of um, important information um, how to how to write the documentation how all, all, all these uh, the headlines and the, the tags and everything works inside the documentation when I started to do this kind this contributions I there was there was not this document. This was done by Ariso, which is great to have. Uh, otherwise, what I did was just trying to copy what existed somewhere that looks like what I wanted, and then try to 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 make it work. Uh, but everything is is in here. Um, explained how, how how to use um, to to add um to add um. Uh, an image. Uh, it's explained here as well, but I will, I will talk about it uh, a bit because it's a different. Uh, um, it's it's different, right? So, what you do, you you create the image that you want to to use, and you need to put it. And I will open here. So, in the in QGIS documentation root, uh, there is one folder called resources. There are the, the resources for English and then for docs. And then you would go to the user manual. Imagine that we want to add the image in that preamble with my face or something. I don't know. Um, so what you do, you go and you, and this folder has 
the exact same structure as the um, as the, the source code so you would have to go to user manual preamble um, whoops oh, sorry uh, actually preamble is in introduction I think well, no, actually there isn't a preamble folder here because there is no images for that section, but you only need to do is create a new one called preamble. Uh, then you just copy the uh, uh, an image there to that folder like this. If you go to, if you go to, uh, and if you do git status, you'll see that there is a, in the untracked file, untracked files, there is a, a new folder that is here. Uh, and as it, it, git, git does a very good job explaining what you need to do next. And it says that you need to use git add in the name of the file to, to add it. So you can just, Add that file here. And I actually add the old, the old, the old folder. Oops, and now you can see that all the files that were inside that, that folder um, were, were copied there. And then, then I would go to the preamble and I will use what, what was explained here, like this, uh, not, not this one. Actually, this is not a, a good example. The best way to do this is just go to some other uh, place. We, we could improve that. And you, you find an... Uh, And you, you could copy this, like this, and you would put it in here. Okay. And you needed to use the, the right path, right? You'll notice that um, in this case, the, the path is static instead of being the resources as we, and English as we seen. The reason for that is the way we have uh, the docum documentation done now to allow uh, different um, images with, from different languages. We have it um, divided in the resources folder uh, by by language so you can see here the the Deutsch the French one from Netherlands but the original one is always um, the English one and we added that file and what 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 happens is that uh, when make HTML uh, runs um, it will copy the files from the the folder to this static one um, and it will put it in in place so now you'll just again you have some changes in the um, Adds figure. So uh, you commit new push. And if you go to, you need to wait a bit. And if you go to the repo and you, to the pull request page, you update it. You will see 
but now there are three um, three commits. There are three files changed, and actually there is one that is a file, uh, an image. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Alexander, <clears throat> I'm guessing the answer is no, but is it possible to add GIFs, or does it have to be a static JPEG or PNG? Um, you can use uh, you can use um, PNG. PNG it's the it's the one that we always use. I don't know if GIF will work. I think I tried before, and it works in HTML, but then it doesn't uh, work in in PDF. So uh, we kind of we don't use that because of that. I think it it might work. Uh, the a GIF it should work because it's just a plain uh, image. Okay. And, and I think we can use also a SVG, um, but for QG's documentation, we always use PNG, and we have some in the guidelines. We have a couple of uh, rules for. We have a couple of rules for for how to how to how to create screenshots. Um, try to make it small as possible and uh, not resize them uh, in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, so, so that this, the, this, it doesn't get blurred. There are a couple of of rules here that you can follow. I wanted just to to cover one last. Thing, if we have time, I, I know that um, Raymond is waiting. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the sub substitutions. Which is, which are this little thing here. So um, when you open the the the, the, um, the our documentation, it's it's very common for you to see uh, some images uh, in 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 line in the text, like these ones. Um, so this must be added to the to the. To, to the text, and it, it's done by using uh, this this uh, not not this one. Sorry, I think there is a um, something here about it. Yeah, use this syntax here. Uh, so it's a pipe, and then the name of the substitution, and then another pipe, and it will show this this icon. Um, you will probably have most of the 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 substitutions will be already available. If they are not available, so you need to create a new one. You need to create a PNG file with the button that you want to to use, and you need to put it in in a, in a special folder in the resources in English common. Did we use Alex again? Yeah, I think we lost him again. Okay, maybe maybe it's a good time to wrap up because I know there's another session planned. Uh, I think uh, did he, I think he mentioned there's another yeah session planned for Raymond. Uh, um, yeah, so um, I will I will put the recording of this on YouTube, assuming that assuming that it all recorded fine. And so if you want to watch again, miss some small details, you can rewatch it on that uh, recording. Um, and uh, I would just say that there's quite a lot of technical steps involved, but I think that uh, if you wanted to help um, with the documentation, just starting with the first case that he gave, which is just using GitHub directly editing there is probably much 
better place to start in the beginning, just change a few sentences here and there or add a few paragraphs. And then as you get into the workflow, then it'll probably be more worth your time investing in getting the whole whole chain working. Um, right. And I think um, we have quite a few people in the project that would be happy to help you if, you, if you're trying to get, um, uh, if you're trying to get um, like your workflow set up and you need some help with the environment, then we could probably schedule a, like a Zoom call or a Skype or whatever um, session to help you get your, your build environment set up. Uh, Tom is asking. So I understand it correctly. Can I ask? Yes. It seems like the the main difference from using just editing directly on GitHub or actually setting up this whole huge repository local thing mm -hmm. is that I can add images in the second instance, right? Uh, you can add images. You can also ed edit multiple files in a single work, like in a single change set. So you can say, um, I'm going to find everywhere where it references the file menu and fix some incorrect reference and do across the whole documentation set one lot of changes which you provide as one pull request and then the reviewer can see okay you've gone uniformly through all the documentation and changed oh. the, this reference uh, which is difficult to do on the github platform uh, yeah okay so, so um i i think uh, richard can jump in but i think it probably is possible to add pictures in github but because you can upload images um, so it, I don't think it's impossible to do that, but you, you need to kind of uh, like figure out the workflow for doing that. It might be like Wikipedia, and then you link them in a different way. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is a bit more tricky because you can't preview things and you can't see whether the image is showing like you expect it to show or whatever. And just to quickly address Tom's question about irritating reviewers, maybe Richard, if you, uh, is Richard still in the room here? I think he might have left again, but... I would guess that um, if you're making lots of small changes, like changing the, which is spelt incorrectly, or uh, something like this, just many, many small things, it could irritate them. But if they're really trivial changes, they're also quick to review and so easy to just say, yes, that's fine, and uh, apply the change. So in some ways, having small, many small requests can be easier for reviewers than having a lot of big requests where you've got to really read through a lot of content and try to understand how it all fits together. So, um, yeah, um, uh, there are, um, yeah, so for, yeah, quick typo fixes and things and you, um, you want to just do a quick change, shit like that, I think nobody will complain. It will be, everyone will be happy if you make a pull request like that. Um, good. I think we need to wrap up so that Raymond can jump in. Raymond, um, uh, do you want to just carry on in the same room with your session? Um, I saw a question from Giovanni asking if we can use the room. While we're waiting for Raymond to find his mic button, um, any other questions we can take off to the mailing list? There's a documentation mailing list or um, feel free to email one of the people that have been uh, mentioned, like Richard or myself or uh, Alex or um, Harry so um, okay um, Giovanni I think it might be simpler just to keep this room going I'll stop the video and start a new one because then people here are wanting to join that session they can just stay here but, but um, we but Tim we still need someone to have a link uh, under the session uh, where it's rules late at, at, um, at the github page there should be a link. Um, for the wiki? Yeah, for the wiki. Yeah, I can put the link into here. And there's no time on there as well. So, um, yeah. 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 Um, but maybe you can just copy the same link details from, the pre, from this session into that one, and then uh, it will be clear for everyone. Alex is back. Uh, any last words from you, um, Alex? I'm going to copy the link in now. Sorry, I... I <laughs> I don't even know when, when I lost you. So, <laughs> um, but uh, well, I don't think I have anything to add. Just uh, give the opportunity for someone to do some questions if they have some. I will I will try to share um, in the in the meeting uh, page. I will share the, the the slides so that you can use as a reference. 
And Alex, um, I think there was another session planned to start now. So maybe um, we can take the sessions, uh, the questions offline from, from here. But I can just, on behalf of everybody here, say thank you very, very much for uh, dealing with this topic so nicely and making everything so clear. And um, I really hope your, all your hard work pays off in terms of lots of people getting enthusiastic to come and help with the document. Yeah, I'm expecting to get flooded with uh, <laughs> pull requests. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very okay, much. Okay, thank you, everyone. If you want to join the next session by Raymond, then you can just stay here. Um,